here is that the first weekend uh, April and we're getting sleep okay well it's about uh, 38 39 degrees in the greenhouse it's close to freezing outside and I also wanted to show you this I've got issues on my tomato plants that I planted in here and I don't know what's what that is or what's causing it but right now it's showing 32 in Conway which is where I'm near I'm uh, near Conway um, and that's not a huge deal today during the day see it's at 10 30 it's about 10 45 now but if you scroll down here and you look it's supposed to get uh, below freezing uh, tonight tomorrow morning really early when I'm sleeping um, and tomatoes cannot take a freeze neither can the cucurbits that I have planted out in the greenhouse I have a lot of stuff out there but um, so now I have a decision to make do I go out there and protect them I mean I put a lot of work into getting the tomatoes where they are now and I never thought that we would dip below freezing this late and what I've decided is that I'm going to take um, the strong about half of the plants and move them into the winter greenhouse to protect them against the cold i have got to do something about these tomatoes we've gotten past the freeze part and uh, they're in here they're a little less defensive in other words the leaves are not as curled in which that's a good sign but uh, we still have to do something about this so I'm gonna take a troubleshooting approach I'll show you that what I've got here is a sprayer and I sprayed all these tomatoes right through here last night and what's in here is Epsom salt now magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt will green up the leaves and, and basically increase chlorophyll in the leaves and that'll help uh, plant a lot of times with fighting things or enhance anyway we'll keep our eye on that and see if that helps or not and these tomatoes were in the greenhouse as well but they weren't plugged in into the fawn 2 system at all same plants same medium same everything and they were also sitting in the flooded out greenhouse uh, some folks might mentioned humidity or leaf spot and various things like that and my thoughts are Although you certainly could be right. That could be what it is. My thoughts are that there was um, That these weren't affected uh, So it, it has to be more contained within the fawn too So because of that we've taken other steps I'm draining out all the fawn beds now and I'm getting rid of the old nutrient in case the nutrient didn't mix and created a nutrient lockout type issue so as you can see over here this is the next one I'm draining and uh, it's getting lower down here and it's going out the tube outside I'll take the hose I'll show you I will start it and We'll let the water come in and I uh, actually need to go turn the water back on <laughs> but we'll let the water come in drip down and then continue to uh, basically wash out all the nutrient the older nutrient and start over all right while that's washing out I'm going to start adding nutrient into the other and we have to rule out that it's not a nutrient issue and uh, well you just you got to do that um, it could be that the nutrient didn't mix right however I wanted to show you that these brassicas are sending out roots they're nice and healthy and white and um, from all the gutters so they're not showing any type of burn or resistance or anything so it makes makes it even more perplexing uh, to figure out what it is so anyway I'm gonna mix it I'm gonna mix it on a lower dose I'm gonna get it down to about 600 instead 
of 900 which is where I wanted to get before. Now 900 wouldn't normally bother a tomato at all. In fact uh, a lot of folks go much higher than that. Now this stresses me. It doesn't bother the plants but it does bother me. You know you have this amount of water come through here so much so I gotta wear rubber boots and it just totally trashes everything. I spent years um, trying to clean this up and elevate it and do all kinds of things and what I've settled on more or less is that I'm gonna have to live with a degree of dirtiness <laughs> and that is actually not my personality at all I do not like dirtiness I like uh, I like things to be more clean appearing and whatnot so I do think about that I'm telling you because I do think about that in fact, I've taken the tops off of here. I brought them outside there and I've uh, cleaned them off pretty good to uh, present a little better appearance. But when the new greenhouse is built, I hope I won't have some of these issues and I hope I can present a little better. So there's that. This time I'm mixing the three nutrients separately. Master Blend, Epsom Salt, Calcium Nitrate. Before I had mixed Maxter Blend and Epsom Salt together, I added the chemicals or the nutrients dry, and uh, then I added water. So I don't know if that that's something I've never done before. I didn't think it would bother it at all. I always do Master Blend first, then Epsom Salt, then Calcium Nitrate. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to add the Master Blend first, then the Calcium Nitrate, then the Epsom Salt, or then the Epsom Salt, then the Calcium Nitrate. Okay, I've got four affected plants. That's a closer look at it. It's becoming necrotic. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a good portion of the foliage off so that the plant can focus um, any energy into new growth at the top. I am going to leave some of the um, leaves on because it needs to be able to photosynthesize still so it doesn't die off so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do that and we're gonna stick it back in the fawn with the new nutrients along with some healthy uh, or plants that weren't affected and do a comparison over the next few days and see how it looks all right those are the leaves that I'm gonna take off now I'm going to rinse the soil thoroughly in case there's any excess nutrient buildup if it's a nutrient issue and uh, I'm going to rinse it thoroughly before I stick it in the fawn and I'm also going to spray it with some antifungal. This antifungal is potassium bicarbonate, neem oil, oregano oil uh, I also have some grapefruit seed extract in here and all these are antifungal type things and I have just enough dawn in here so that it'll mix with it I'm gonna spray underneath the leaves here and um, let this drain thoroughly and uh, then we'll stick it in the fawn I've got all the fawns filled with fresh nutrient and tops back on and brassicas put in place. These are the four that we're going to monitor. I had two extra spares. That's all I had. Um, so the same exact plant. And just to help see if it affects other things, I put a couple butternut in there as well. So uh, we'll follow it for a few days and see what happens. I'll here we are three days later and the newer foliage seems to be doing okay on all the others and the ones that didn't have something uh, are not showing any signs. This is what the ones that were in the heated greenhouse look like now. See the newer foliage looks good, the old still has this on it but I didn't cut any of these. I think I'm going to uh, 
go ahead and put them back in the system and watch it for a couple more days. As you can see here on this windy and flooded day, <laughs> that the tomatoes are all plugged back into the system and they're looking great. Um, if I had to take a guess of what caused this, uh, the only thing I can think of since the what the plants that were not in the system were not affected at all, the only thing I can think of it was some kind of nutrient toxicity or nutrient lockout where they weren't getting enough and my and with that in mind it may be more towards the magnesium side since um, I did not mix or I did not put the uh, master blend in first and then the Epsom salt what I did was I added them together dry and mixed them so I think the Epsom salt which is magnesium sulfate may have had an issue uh, that translated to the tomatoes themselves but if you look at them they're even starting to flower here. There's a couple of them that are starting to flower. But they look really good. I'm pleased with it. And uh, yeah. Very, very pleased. This is Brent, you guys. This is the uh, follow-up on the tomato spot issue. Did you know you can subscribe to me? Check it out. Click right here on the subscribe button. See that? It's got a little check next to it. If you click on the little bell to the right of it, it'll bring up a little notification that says send me all notifications to the channel every time I make a video. Click save. You'll get an email notification that I have made a new video. This is for those who don't know. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.